One of my followers on Twitter had tagged me in this particular post. I can't remember exactly which one it was, but if you are out there listening, shout out to you. And I'm glad that they did because this information that I'm bringing to you, while not so surprising, it's also not surprising why they decided to keep it so suppressed. And it also plays into the narrative of white female nature of today. This woman's name is Stephanie E. Brown Rogers. And she's a professor at um, Berkeley. And she wrote a book that came out back in February called They Were Her Property. And it was basically talking about the role that white women played during slavery and, you know, the enslavement of black people. Not her role as like the mistress of the house or, you know, whatever it was that she did. But it talks about the role she played as a slave owner herself. Now, for years, we've always seen the narratives and we always heard when it came to slave ownership, it was always the men who owned the slaves. Yes, they were the ones who bought the slaves. They were the ones that pretty much, uh, I guess you can, I wouldn't say groomed them, but they were the ones that were like the overseers. They were the ones that were always outside with the slaves who were in the field. While the woman was always in the house with the house slave. But it left out the part that white women own slaves too. Now, white women didn't have those rights back then to go out there and actually purchase a slave. It was always left up to their men. So what would happen is she would basically inherit the slaves, maybe from her father or her husband if he died before her, and she would get the slaves. And according to her discovery, this woman right here, it said 40% of white women owned slaves that is only that is almost 50 percent now the reason why i correlated with today is think back to 2016 during the election of donald trump over 50 percent of white women voted for him over 50 it was probably over that but we know it was over 50 we know it wasn't below it and then you think about 40% of white women own slaves through inheritance. That's almost half. And then we got to think about when they were owning those slaves, what they were doing with the slaves, especially the men. She most likely was coercing him into sexual favors that he could not get out of, or she would say and do something to make his life, well, their, well, their life was already in hell but make it even worse than what it already was. Think about that movie Mandingo. We had that scene where that white uh, woman, I think that was the daughter, kept trying to get Mandingo to fuck her. He ended up getting killed be behind her lie. So when you think of something like this, now you see why a lot of people are kind of standoffish to when it comes to white women. This is another reason why a lot of people like ourselves don't really cling to the plight of white women. Especially when you hear something like this. Because a lot of them tend to put themselves into a victim role just to get sympathy. Look at the chaos they have created with this Me Too nonsense. But they want people to latch on to it. This is why a lot of people are real standoffish when they see a black man with a white woman because of the historical context behind of how that white woman is when it comes to black men. At the same time, it makes a lot of people also side eye why black women decided to align herself with feminists and feminism when black women didn't need it. Her home was already intact. It was that white woman's whose home was not together, but she needed the support and she could only get it through you and in turn turned her back and now our community is in shambles and that was her doing along with her man but she played a huge role in it and now and notice nowadays she's trying her hardest her damn hardest to out savage her man but they turned up against them with this and uh these anti-abortion laws which by the way in the state of louisiana if y'all haven't heard they just kicked in to ban abortions there after the six-week uh heartbeat thing 
Oh, it's going to go nationwide. And like I said, it's going nationwide. Because they're going through their struggles of having children. I've read somewhere where they said white women for the last few years have 1.6 million abortions per year. That's been for the last few years, not the last year, but the last few years. They didn't give a specific year. They just said few. That could, that's more than a couple. So we're talking about 2016 and beyond. But yeah, this information right here doesn't surprise me, but I'm glad that it has now been exposed. Like I said, this woman has wrote a book. She did the research on it and it goes into detail. I'm sure in the book it goes into way more detail. But basically, I gave you the summarized version of it. White women couldn't go out there and buy her own slave. She had to inherit it. And like I said, only God knows what she was doing with those slaves when they were in the house, especially to the men. And see, back then, there was no such thing as rape. So technically, she technically in a way, she was raping the men because they knew the men knew the consequence of dealing with her. She knew the consequence of dealing with him, but she was willing to take the risk because she knew she had nothing to lose. Because all she had to do was say that he touched me inappropriately or he raped me. That was all she had to say, and they would automatically take her word for it. And that is why, with the help of the Jedi, well, I, um, I remixed the word, which is why he calls them the his, he calls them the historical white bitch. I call them the hoe historical white bitch notice the hoe in there and who was the first whores of the world they didn't look like you and i but i thought this was some very good information i'm glad that this was actually sent to me and i'm glad that i was able to deliver this information to you as well but y'all let me know what y'all think about this down in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. I will talk to you in the next one.